Imagine standing on the edge of a prehistoric world where the air bites your skin and every day is a battle against the elements. This is the world of the Neanderthals, our ancient cousins, the rugged hunters who ruled Europe's icy landscapes for 300,000 years. They were here before us, carving out a life in caves, wielding stone tools, and facing down beasts like mammoths and cave bears. Then, strangers appeared, modern humans, our direct ancestors. Their arrival changed everything. What happened when these two human species met? Did they fight, love, or share the land? And why did the Neanderthals vanish, leaving only whispers of their existence in our DNA? Picture a Europe unrecognizable from today. Vast glaciers stretch across the north, locking the land in a deep freeze. In the south, dense forests of pine and birch cling to life. The central plains are a patchwork of tundra and coniferous groves, while Scandinavia lies buried under ice, a barren wasteland. This is the Ice Age, a time when survival demanded strength, cunning, and community. In this unforgiving world, the Neanderthals thrived. Neanderthals were built for the cold. Their stocky bodies, broad noses, and powerful limbs were adaptations to a brutal climate. Think of them as the ultimate survivalists, shorter than modern humans, but with muscles that could put today's strongest athletes to shame. If they competed in a prehistoric Olympics, they'd dominate the podium, hurling spears and wrestling beasts with raw power. Their brains were as large as ours, maybe larger housed in skulls with sloping foreheads and heavy brow ridges. These weren't the brutish cavemen of old cartoons. They were intelligent, adaptable, and fiercely social. They lived in small bands, perhaps 15 to 20 strong, moving across vast territories from Spain to Siberia. Their homes were caves or makeshift shelters where fires crackled against the cold. They crafted tools, sharp flint blades, scrapers, and wooden spears, honed over generations. Their diet, meat, and lots of it. Imagine a pride of lions, always on the hunt. Neanderthals stalked deer, reindeer, and even massive creatures like woolly rhinos, often at close range. Their bones bear the scars of these encounters, fractures akin to those of modern rodeo riders, a testament to their daring. But they weren't just hunters. They cared for their own, a Neanderthal skeleton from Germany, found with a healed elbow injury, suggests he was tended by his group for years despite his disability. This wasn't a society that abandoned the weak. It was one that valued every member. They buried their dead, sometimes with care, in shallow graves or curled in fetal positions, hinting at rituals we can only guess at. Did they believe in an afterlife? We may never know but their actions suggest a depth of feeling we recognize as human. The Neanderthal's ability to survive in such harsh conditions challenges the stereotype of them as primitive. Their physical adaptations and social bonds show a species finely tuned to its environment. Unlike modern humans who innovate rapidly, Neanderthals stuck to what worked, refining their tools and strategies over millennia. This stability was their strength, but perhaps also their Achilles heel. As we'll see, change was coming, and it wore a human face. Around 40,000 years ago, a new shadow fell across Neanderthal lands. Modern humans, Homo sapiens, stepped into Europe, their origins traced back to Africa. Taller, leaner, with rounded skulls and prominent chins, they looked different. They acted differently too. While Neanderthals relied on tried and true methods, these newcomers brought innovation, bone tools, sewn clothing, and most strikingly, art. Cave paintings, carved figurines, and shell beads marked their presence, a creative spark absent in Neanderthal sites. What happened when these two groups met? The evidence is tantalizingly vague, like a story half told. Some suggest violent clashes, Neanderthals defending their hunting grounds against these interlopers, 
Others propose coexistence, even cooperation. The truth likely lies in between, a messy mix of competition and connection. Sites like Vindija Cave in Croatia, where Neanderthal and modern human artifacts overlap, hint at shared spaces. But the most compelling evidence comes from our genes. In Leipzig, Germany, scientists at the Max Planck Institute cracked a code that rewrote history. By sequencing Neanderthal DNA from bones like those found in Vindija, they discovered that non-African modern humans carry 1%, 2% Neanderthal DNA. This means interbreeding happened, likely in the Middle East, 50,000, 100,000 years ago, before modern humans spread into Europe and Asia. Picture a chance encounter, a Neanderthal hunter meeting a modern human scout under a desert sky. Did they share a fire, a meal, a moment? Their children carried both legacies, spreading Neanderthal genes across the globe. This interbreeding is a game changer. It proves Neanderthals weren't so different from us. They were family. But it also raises questions. Why didn't their genes spread more widely in Europe, where they lived longest? The answer might lie in numbers. Modern humans reproduced faster, their populations swelling, while Neanderthals dwindled. This wasn't just a clash of cultures, it was a demographic tidal wave. Deep in the forests of Croatia lies Krapina, a site that has fueled debate for over a century. In 1899, excavators uncovered hundreds of Neanderthal bones, remains of 75 to 80 individuals, from children to adults. The bones tell a grim story. Many are fractured, some bear cut marks, and others appear burned. Were the Krapina Neanderthals cannibals, consuming their own in rituals or desperation? The evidence is unsettling but not conclusive. Cut marks suggest flesh was removed, possibly for marrow extraction, but whether this was survival-driven or ceremonial remains unclear. Another find at Krapina adds intrigue, a skull with regular scratches as if marked deliberately. Could this be evidence of symbolic behavior, a precursor to the art and rituals of modern humans? Some researchers see these marks as intentional, perhaps a way to honor or defile the dead. Others caution against overinterpretation, noting that natural processes or scavenging animals could explain the damage. Krapina challenges us to confront our biases. The idea of Neanderthal cannibalism fits the old savage stereotype, but we must consider context. Starvation, ritual, or even post-mortem processing for burial could explain these findings. The scratched skull, though, hints at something deeper, a spark of creativity or spirituality. It's a reminder that Neanderthals were complex, not the one-dimensional brutes of popular imagination. By 28,000 years ago, the Neanderthals were gone. Their caves stood empty, their fires cold. What drove them to extinction? The answer lies in a perfect storm of factors. First, the climate. The Ice Age was a roller coaster of warming and cooling, disrupting prey populations like deer and bison. Neanderthals, with their meat-heavy diet, were vulnerable to these shifts. Modern humans, by contrast, diversified their food sources, gathering plants and fishing when game was scarce. By 28,000 years ago, the Neanderthals were gone. Their caves stood empty, their fires cold. What drove them to extinction? The answer lies in a perfect storm of factors. First, the climate. The Ice Age was a roller coaster of warming and cooling, disrupting prey populations like deer and bison. Neanderthals, with their meat-heavy diet, were vulnerable to these shifts. Modern humans, by contrast, diversified their food sources, gathering plants and fishing when game was scarce. Finally, cultural differences. Modern humans were innovators, constantly adapting. They painted caves, crafted jewelry, and developed complex languages, fostering cooperation across groups. Neanderthals, while skilled, were conservative, sticking to familiar ways. This rigidity may have limited their ability to adapt to a changing world. The Neanderthals' extinction wasn't just about survival of the fittest, it was about adaptability. 
Modern humans didn't just outfight them, they outthought and outbred them. Yet the Neanderthal's legacy endures in our DNA, a quiet reminder that their story is part of ours. Their disappearance wasn't a failure, it was a chapter in the broader human saga. To bring the Neanderthals to life, let's explore two stories rooted in archaeological evidence, painting a vivid picture of their world. The Crippled Hunter of Neander Valley. In 1856, workers in Germany's Neander Valley unearthed a skeleton with a remarkable story. This Neanderthal, dubbed Neanderthal I, had a healed elbow fracture that left his left arm weaker than his right. Yet he lived into his 40s, a ripe age for the time. His survival suggests his group cared for him, sharing food and protection despite his disability. Picture him sitting by a fire, his arms stiff but his spirit unbroken, teaching younger hunters the ways of the chase. This act of compassion shows Neanderthals as more than warriors. They were a community bound by loyalty. The Child of Skladina Cave In Belgium's Skladina Cave, a child's jawbone, dated to 40,000 years ago, reveals a poignant tale. 3D scans show the child was about eight years old, with teeth developing faster than a modern child's. This suggests a shorter childhood, with less time to learn survival skills. Imagine this child bundled in furs, watching elders sharpen spears, knowing they'd soon join the hunt. Their early death, perhaps from injury or illness, reminds us of the fragility of life in the Ice Age. Yet the care taken to bury them speaks to a universal human instinct, to honor the lost. These stories ground the Neanderthals in humanity. They weren't just fossils, they were people with struggles, bonds, and hopes. The crippled hunter and the Skladina child show a society that valued its members, even in the face of hardship. These glimpses make their extinction all the more poignant, a loss not just of a species, but of a way of life. The main As we stand in the shadow of the Neanderthals, what can we learn? Their story is a mirror reflecting our own strengths and flaws. They were masters of their world, yet their inflexibility may have doomed them. Modern humans, with our relentless innovation and adaptability, conquered the planet. But at what cost? We've reshaped the Earth, often at the expense of other species and even our own kin, like the Neanderthals. The lesson is clear. Adaptability is survival but compassion is humanity. The Neanderthals care for their injured and their burial of their dead remind us that strength lies not just in competition, but in community. As we face modern challenges, climate change, social division, technological upheaval, we must balance innovation with empathy. The Neanderthals' genes live on in us. Let their spirit of solidarity guide us too. So the next time you gaze at a starry sky or feel the weight of a tough day, think of the Neanderthals. They hunted, loved, and dreamed under those same stars. Their story isn't just a tale of extinction. It's a call to embrace our shared humanity, to adapt without losing sight of what makes us human.